Hey, what's up guys? I'm here in Germany at FIBO and I'm uh, gonna give you a little rundown of uh, the travel deal. Most people are always like, ah, oh, I don't know what to do in eating when I travel, but the reality is if you really go to great lengths, you could get it done and it's not a problem. Um, I did bring about, I don't know, about almost 2.2 pounds, which is a kilo of chicken with me when I left uh, the US. Um, and I had rice cakes and I had nuts and I had fruit, which I had to discard. You can't really transfer produce or anything like that, but the chicken was fine. And uh, you gotta have like a collapsible cooler like this. So you go through TSA, this will easily fit in the upper head compartment. And what you do is you don't really bring all your Tupperware containers with all your different meals. You bring like two or three containers. And then you have bags of chicken. You put the ice in the bottom, chicken, and the ice in the top. And I pack my containers, and then I can easily just assemble my meals as I need them. This is a travel scale. You put it in your back pocket, put it anywhere. Uh, it's not gonna get damaged, easy to travel with. It's definitely a go-to, and even if you're at home and you travel a lot in the United States, this is definitely a, a, a key, key, key tool here. You can do it, you just gotta keep your food cold, and bring extra Ziploc bags so you can keep refilling the ice because you're not gonna have a refrigerator to be able to take your ice packs and refreeze them. So having a Ziploc bag and refilling the ice once you get through TSA, refilling it every, periodically every few hours is really the key thing to do. Now, I did get here on purpose and visit my clients who are now good friends of ours in Germany four days before. <clears throat> so I had enough food to make me, my wife and I, through a few days just to like get there and I can cook more food. And I went to the grocery store in Germany, which grocery stores in Germany are unbelievable. The quality of food overall is much better than the US. I mean. The U.S. does have the same quality, but you have to pay a lot more money to get it. So like all beef is grass fed. Um, all the chicken is very high quality and it's kind of mid-grade price in comparison to the United States. We have to spend like $8 a pound to get air chilled Bell Evans chicken. About four kilos of chicken I cooked before I left uh, my friend's house in Germany and drove here. Um, and I also needed a separate cooler because I figured the, the hotel refrigerators never work. They don't and I bring a thermometer, and I put the thermometer in the refrigerator, and of course it's 60 degrees. Cold in the room, but not cold enough to keep chicken cold uh, from expiring for four days. And I'm not exactly ready to have diarrhea or throwing up everywhere. I know many of you guys like to torture yourself and do that. So uh, what I did is I bought this cheap old cooler, and um, I keep the chicken in here. And as you can see, like, you, know, you got the Ziploc bags. I gotta, I gotta rechange the ice, which I'm gonna show you how I do that. And there's what's left of my chicken. Probably got like a kilo in there left, which I'll be short, but I'll get some more. My friend's gonna bring me a little bit extra. But you gotta improvise what you got. But really, you know, when you travel, you don't try to make it luxury, crazy food items. You see the basic stuff, uh, non-perishable carbohydrate um, that you don't need to cook anything with, like rice cakes, uh, even rye bread. Because rye bread, to me, uh, digests a little better than the wheat bread. Not to mention the bread here digests much better than the bread in the United States. Probably all the less preservatives. Nuts, and I ended up buying fruit here, so every meal for me is gonna be like a fruit, uh, a little bit of a starch, a uh, good amount of nuts, fats, and um, of course, chicken. And I will cycle through this cooler, and I change the ice usually like twice a day to make sure it stays cold. I did bring, I, <laughs> I do go crazy, and I bring everything, so. This is the box my friend gave me because, you know, and, and it's funny, in Germany, they don't give you plastic bags at grocery stores. You have to bring your own bag, um, which is great because it's less litter because, you know, you go to Stop and Shop in the U.S., they give you like 15 plastic bags for like four items. Um, no wonder we have such a plastic problem because it's just so wasteful. Here, that is not the case. So he gave me a box and I'd be able to transfer all my stuff I needed. So I'm gonna pull the essentials out. So I got some uh, rice cakes. I did bring a macadamia nut oil from home. It was a new one that was sealed, nice bubble wrapped it, put it in my carry-on. And that's the other thing. Don't put your food in, I'm sorry, that wasn't a carry-on, my check-in luggage. Don't put your food in your check-in luggage. You're dummy if you do that. Because it's gonna be tossed around, it could, water could leak. The best thing to do is have all your clothes and your stuff in your check-in luggage and travel with what can go up underneath the seat or in the overhead compartment with your food. That way you have control over it. I bought a bunch of these, a couple of these. This is, uh, my buddy makes this, this is a great company, Rice and Grinders, which is basically flavored cream of rice. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have a microwave here, which I don't hear, but I did at my friend's house in Germany. Apples, I like apples. 
mainly because it makes you shit. No, really, it kind of helps cut with constipation, especially if you're traveling. You know, I do two apples, three apples a day, and uh, slice them up, put a little cinnamon on it. Helps to stay regular, because every travel you get all bound up, you know? Whatever left over from my oranges. Of course, my salt. Gotta get my salt. What's funny is this is the salt I actually bought when I was in Florida for the road trip. That's what's left of it. I did buy some extra stuff when I was here, you know, just for to see if I can, you know, for extra crackers and stuff like that for carbs. But I bought these, but these don't digest well for me. Um, so I ended up having one or two and didn't really work out. So I kind of put them on a back burner. And this is like German rye bread. This is like real rye bread. So if you look at this little, little container here, basically this is 500 grams. This is dense. And uh, one piece of bread is like 24 carbohydrates, 21 carbohydrates. And this is very dense bread, digests great. There's no preservatives and junk in it like we put in the US. Um, but it digests great and it's an easy, non-perishable carbohydrate that I can transfer with. Yeah, is it wonderful? Is it jasmine white rice of a rice cooker? No, but when you travel and you wanna stay on plan and you don't wanna spend $400 a day on making six different meals, this is how I do it. Um, really in the end, like I just wanna serve the purpose of really getting in the cleanest food I can without messing up my digestion and make me feel energized and getting what I need to do to continue how I normally eat. So you gotta improvise. It's not gonna be crazy, wonderful meals. That's that, and I bought some waters, of course, because you know how expensive water can be. So I was at the hotel, I at the grocery store, I bought a couple of cases of water. And that's really it. It's very simple, it's very quick, very easy, and it doesn't have to be complicated, but you just gotta realize that you want to find the bare basics of your meals that you can fundamentally put together that's going to be um, non-perishable and ease the burden and ease your wallet and be able to stay on track. So many people will talk to me like they go on vacation and by the time vacation or they travel, by the time they get back, they feel like crap, they're constipated, they're tired, they're jet lagged. And when I travel, that doesn't happen to me at all. Um, and one thing I do is the day I travel a long trip, I do zero carb. For whatever reason, when I do zero carb the day I travel on an airplane and I do higher fats, I don't have any jet lag. And I don't feel tired, I don't feel sluggish, and I sleep fine that night. You know, a lot of times people travel, they start eating crap, and they travel, and then they feel like crap, then their stomach's digest they're messed up, and they're constipated, and then they feel horrible, and it takes three or four days to regulate. So I found that out myself. I actually found out by accident when I was in prep. I always noticed when I was in prep, and I would travel, no matter how length of the flight, I would never be jet lagged or tired. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe it's because it's lower carb. Well, sure enough, it is. So that's the deal. I'm gonna go show you guys now how I recycle the ice. Dude, it's real simple. You know, you go to the, you go to the bathtub, drain the water out, walk over the ice machine, refill the bags, pack the ice in there, and always make sure that when, you, when you're storing the meat that you put the plastic bag lid up above the ice. So like at night, when it starts to melt and the water level uh, rises, water doesn't go down into the Ziploc bag and you don't have chicken sitting in water. You only make that mistake once. And the thing is this, it does take work. So don't be lazy. You know, people like, you know, they try to keep a good game, they're good for like the first 12 hours and everything falls apart. All right, so that's kind of how, I done, how it's done, how I travel with food. It really doesn't change. I was kind of, this is the first time me traveling overseas and kind of doing this at home is obviously a little easier. Um, but I mean, if you want to do it, you'll do it. If you don't and you're lazy, you won't. Um, so really don't make excuses. It's just that you don't want to do it or you don't want to stay on track or you think it's a pain in the butt or you think people are going to think you're weird, which I think if you're living your life based on what other people think, I think that's weird. But that's how you do it. Very simple. I know uh, many people may not come up with the same ideas, but you know, you can kind of take these ideas and kind of make them to yourself. And obviously, if you're a woman or you're a smaller guy, you don't need to eat as much food, it's gonna be much easier, uh, much less to deal with. So that's really how you do it. Just make sure you keep your food cold um, and prepare. And uh, oh yeah, one to mention, one of the things I, one of the reasons why I don't have as much chicken, because I obviously always plan, is we were on the train and the guy started overdosing and people were standing around him while he was gurgling. So I kind of stepped in, put him in a recovery position, we carried him outside recovery position and we called the ambulance and my original cooler was on the train still and that took off 
So that was four meals of chicken in there, fruit, two forks, containers, um, rice cakes from home, and a couple other things. But, so that's gone. That's why I'm a little short in chicken, but my buddy in Germany's gonna bail me out. It's good to have buddy, good buddies in everywhere, in all places. So in closing, I must add, my wife is awesome. We travel together, and we're lucky because we both do the same thing, we work from home. And I'm the master at planning for food, and obviously everything I just showed you. And she's the master for keeping my shit together on when I have to be where, and my passports and my tickets and all that stuff. I think really the downside, she likes me to be dependent on her. So I'm like, kind of like a deer in the headlights when she's not around, but she's accomplished that. But she's a godsend and I love her and everything uh, came together because of her.